Every year the world famous Brett Jackson car auction takes place and we're going to give you an exclusive preview of some of the merchandise they'll have. The auction doesn't start till next week so it's closed to the public at the moment but because I'm such a very important VIP that does not apply to me so I get to take you on a sneak tour and look at all this cool stuff. And there's certainly lots of stuff to see. Some nice lights for the bathroom. All the real cars are locked up outside at the moment, so we're going to look at some of these miniatures instead. I kind of like this one myself. If this transportation brings back childhood memories for you, you're probably on social security at the moment. I'm not sure what Bob's big boy is doing here, but I'm sure he's going to cost a lot to own. Security keeping a watch on the goodies. Yeah, that's my dream car. If you don't make the auction this year, there's always next year. One of the advantages of driving these nice cars is I don't have a car payment, so it allows me to own a nice house. As you can see, it needs a wee bit of fixing up here and there. But it has a nice master bedroom with a romantic fireplace. Now how can you beat that? We're going to be taking a drive in the 2016 Mazda CX-3 SUV. The base price of a Mazda CX-3 runs around $21,000. This was the upgraded Grand Touring, which has a long list of luxury items, too long to read here. So it's $26,240. This vehicle did have the technology package, which includes radar cruise control, no thank you, a smart city brake support system, where the computer slams on the brakes if it senses a vehicle is too close in front, uh, no thank you, variable rain sensing wipers, I guess we're too stupid to know when to turn our own wipers on. Make sure you disconnect this before you run it through a car wash or you're going to have some very serious damage. Lane departure warning system. Eh, you shouldn't be asleep when you're driving. I don't need that either. Any high beam control. I haven't tried it, but I'm told it automatically turns the high beams off when the radar senses a car coming. I guess we're too stupid to turn our own lights off. Here's the deal folks, if you like this technology, by all means get it, but I pass. Mazdas are pretty reliable cars, but stuff like this is sure to be trouble down the road, especially when the warranty goes out, and for $1,920, I could find more things to spend my money on. But as always, the choice is yours, but not for me. The styling looks almost identical to the larger Mazda CX-5, but Mazda says it's a different vehicle using a lot of parts from a Mazda 2 series. Not the most attention getting vehicle on the road, but it is good looking I think. I don't have any problem with the styling. One thing I noticed right away is the shelf is internal, not external, so we have no outside body work. This is going to get mud on your pants. This is really the way it should be. There's only one engine offered, a 2 liter putting out 146 horsepower, rated at 29 mpg in the city and 35 on the highway if you get two wheel drive. I was surprised to find out they're not going to offer a manual transmission with this since most of the other vehicles in the Mazda line do. A very nice manual transmission by the way. The only choice here is a 6 speed automatic, but it does have a sport mode for those driving in a hurry. This vehicle is an upgraded all-wheel drive for traction on all four wheels. All-wheel drive traction can be useful if you live where it rains or snows, or if you live where there's lots of sand, or you go off-roading occasionally. The drawback is fuel economy drops from that 29 to 35 to 27 and 32, and the extra weight does slow the vehicle down a little bit during acceleration. If you need the extra traction, all-wheel drive is great. If you don't need it, it's kind of a waste of money, but Mazda offers both choices for you, so take your pick. 
This upgraded GT model has high output LED headlights that also turn with the steering wheel. We'll take these out tonight and see how well they work. It's dark now so we'll take these headlights out and see how they perform. From a distance of 100 feet, low beams a bit too low for me. High beams excellent. The building 300 feet away on high beam lights up very well. Go to low beams disappears. If you're driving on backcountry roads where there's lots of wildlife, you might want to keep your brights on as much as possible. Lights that swivel when you turn the steering wheel is a good feature though. Let's take a look at the interior. They have a nice gauge cluster that's easy to read with lots of useful information. Paddle shifters for those who like to do it themselves. Very simple three knob climate control system, the way all climate control systems should be. A large glove box. On the mixed emotions level, we have this knob which controls the entertainment and navigation system. Just turn the knob and take your choice. Once you learn the system, it's okay, but there's a learning curve which is a pain in the butt. You'll get used to it. On the downside, I could see having this big emergency brake lever here if we had a manual transmission offering, but we don't, so why is it here? We do get some cup holders, but if you lower the armrest, squash. And number three, this is an armrest, not a storage console. Secondly, with the front seats all the way back, the rear seat has limited room, basically for children only, or adults with no legs. The rear cargo area has limited storage too, although you can fold the rear seats down for more. I'm not going to make a big complaint out of the limited interior room. After all, if you want more room, you get a bigger SUV. You don't get a subcompact and complain about the room. It is what it is. In daily commuting, the CX is pleasant enough. The steering has good feel. The ride is reasonably comfortable. It has excellent brakes. With the limited horsepower and the weight of all-wheel drive, acceleration isn't exactly hot rod. But it's more than adequate. On the freeway, there's a bit more road noise coming up into the cabin than I would care for, but that's typical of vehicles in this class. So you'll get used to it. And I'm still getting over 31 mpg, so no point in complaining too much. Most of my driving has been on the freeway thus far. I'm getting 31.7. Can't complain about that. Just a driving note on the upgraded CX-3. When you start the vehicle, this little plastic gizmo pops up. It gives you information about the cruise control and your speed when it gets in focus. Here we go. It's supposed to be adjustable for height. I haven't been able to find that ability. I'll have to look in the owner's manual, but I don't care. I don't look at it anyway. In fact, I find it annoying. Can't get it to go down either. Something else to break. The CX-3 can be taken off pavement. But remember, this is based on a car design. So it's not like we're going to Jeep Wrangler territory. Eh, getting low on gas. Have to stop at this gas station here. Man, what do you gotta do to get some gas around here? The service around here sucks. Now the last time I was here there was a nest of killer bees. Oh yeah. Looks like they're building another nest. Oh! trying to get in through the sunroof, I think it's time to leave. Whew. If I was spending my money, I'd spend an extra two or three grand for the Mazda CX-5, which has far more room, more powerful engine, and real-world gas mileage, which is pretty much equal to this. On the other hand, if you're looking for a compact SUV along the lines of the Jeep Renegade, Fiat 500, Chevy Trax, maybe you're looking at a Honda CRV, 
You ought to take a test drive in this. You might like it better. If you'd like to see our video on the Mazda CX-5 review we did, just click on this link.